2, Canada was a major supplier of food for overseas allies, and this required rationing on the home front. By the end of the war, Canada was contributing 57% of the wheat and flour consumed in Britain, as well as 39% of bacon, 24% of cheese, and 11% of evaporated milk. For the most part, Canadians were eager to contribute to the war effort by participating in the many food-related campaigns. Canning tips and creative recipes were promoted in women's magazines and newspapers. A fat and bones campaign repurposed animal waste for munitions production. And products that couldn't be sold overseas, such as apples and lobster, were branded as patriotic to increase Canadian consumption. Sugar, coffee, butter, and meat were regulated with coupon rationing, and a universal price freeze guaranteed stable food prices. This is a coupon booklet owned by a resident of St. James. As you can see, there are still coupons inside. Despite the wartime restrictions on food, many Canadians ate more and better than they had during the Depression before the war. The first food guide, called Canada's Official Food Rules, was created after significant numbers of Canadians were rejected by the military for medical reasons.